Hi, I'm Rav Senka. And I am Mickey D. From the Scorpions. Scorpions. <laughs> yes. I was going to say ABBA, but I Scorpions. <laughs> <laughs> you have been listening, or you're going to listen to Heavy One. We're going to sit here and yap about a couple of albums, yeah, yeah. some old history, and so stay tuned with us. And watch and listen. To and it. enjoy. If you don't, well, I'm coming. Be happy. Up. I'm going to chase you down. <laughs> <laughs> we talk about albums, Rudolf, and I have to say one of the major albums for me, changing actually that I went crazy on playing drums to, it was Johnny Winter and Live. Ah, I remember, remember that. I remember this. this single yes, album. I remember this. And I tell you one thing. Talking about Johnny Winter, that was the reason why I'm playing Flying V now. Oh because yeah, I see this, saw this poster, <laughs> uh, this poster with the Flying V, but I wasn't sure whether my guitar playing, because I was a rhythm guitar player, was good enough to play this outstanding guitar. Ah. But in the end, I bought it, and I'm very happy that I made a decision because it was love at first sight. But this album, great, yes. yes. But you know, look, going back, I mean, you know, in one case, being um, or becoming a musician, it's being affected by music, right? Yes, of course. So, but but that that that's what that it's album, what is this the, uh, a kind of key point for you? No, no it was. Uh, I'm coming from a drum family. Yeah. You might know uh, my uncle and my cousin. They, they, my uncle played in a, a Swedish band called the Drifters. Ah. He started that in the fifties. Yes, like, yes. He played yeah. more jazz and stuff yeah, yeah. in the beginning, like, and and so it was drums. But once I heard that album, and I don't know why, but that kind of music uh, on live, it was just uh, I was banging away big time, and uh, that was I would say the the starting point. Yeah, At for least you, yeah. Interest was uh, yeah. since I was two years old, but here. I realized what it was and See? banging away. So that was the first album. Yeah, for me, it was like this. My father was always into music, my mother, but it was this kind of Schlager or yeah. a kind of. German whatever. Schlager. Yeah, or With a the kind big of. Mustaches. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> something like this, Hans Albers <laughs> or something like this. Anyway, but somehow I heard this kind of music, new music, rock and roll. Mm -hmm. Little Richard. Cherry, oh, yes. Jenny, 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 come along with me. This was for me the first time where I said, yes, I want to listen A to shock, music. Yeah. And then I heard about the rock and roll uh, kind of uh, uh, stories, uh, including Elvis Presley and Jerry Lewis and stuff. This was for me, I had no uh, chance for albums uh, uh, in the early days because my f uh, I, we had no record player, but my father had always the, the tape uh, machines. Tape record, yeah. And then I, was, I did, I got from my father a radio and I was recording all this stuff. Ah. So, and in Germany, the music was so terrible and also the station was terrible. You couldn't hear uh, uh, really um, well, music on the radio. There's but nothing. I was Radio Monte Carlo. Not was Radio me. Luxembourg. And Luxembourg, Luxembourg. But Radio Monte Carlo had even more rock and roll to yeah, offer. Yeah, yeah. So and that was the first time when I was into kind of this thing. And, and I was very happy to now have my music. Uh, and Elvis Presley and Little Richard were still my favorite ones yeah. in the old rock and roll. So yeah. that's what Levin said too. Little Richard yes. was his, what did he say? He, he was the most dirty. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> dirty, he said, imagine to be gay and black <laughs> in America <laughs> in the exactly, 50s. Yeah. You know, it's like yeah. a, the worst scenario. The worst, yes, but and he, he, he did his, his thing. He you know, composed Shuri Footy. Yeah, yeah. And he, he was really, one because he was black, he got not so much attention like Elvis Presley, but Elvis Presley was as a product yeah. with his uh, um, uh, hair, a bonnet, haircut, uh, with and his movements, movement, yeah, yeah, yeah. with the, the everything, the name Elvis Presley is already yeah, yeah. Uh, thing. And do you know where this guy comes from? The family comes from? No, the from Germany. They're using. They have a German oh. name, and when they moved from uh, so, so kind of south of Germany, they came to America and they changed the name to Presley. Ah. 
Ah. But Elvis Presley. Elvis. Who comes on the, at, uh, to the name Elvis? Elvis, yeah. So, but this is my Today, beginning. By becoming, I'm a little bit older than you. That's yeah, the yeah, reason yeah. why my, my music uh, is started earlier. Yes. But then the, Rolling, the Beatles came. But the Beatles came and shocked everyone. And Rolling Stones Before was Chubby well, Shaker and yeah. Joy D. Yeah, yeah. Uh, more dancing kind of, yeah, which yeah, was I nice know. too. But there were so many. F I was a live album freak yeah. when, when I grew up. I liked the live stuff. But then the most amazing album for me was when Made in Japan came. From Deep Purple. Yes. That changed, that changed yeah, that, everything of course, for that, me. That, is, that was the rock and roll basic. And you know, Black Sabbath was earlier Led Zeppelin, of course. But when Deep Purple came with Made in Japan, that just, for me, it just clicked. Yeah, I saw, I saw them, the first concert in Germany, we played in Berlin and we had one day off and we uh, went to the Deutschlandhalle and we saw um, Deep Purple. What year was that? That was, uh, what do you remember, we have 60, 68, 69. Oh, that, when, uh, that was the first album came out. Oh, okay. The album See. where Speed King yeah, and Speed. Uh, all this stuff was on it. I saw them 1970 first time. See? I was seven years yeah, old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to go with my mom, you know, I was just yes, a yes, little old, kinder. Old, old, old. Seven I was. Seven? Seven years old. Oh. Yeah, so that's great. If you have so uh, early uh, connection to music, mm -hmm. it's fantastic. So it started there, and and then moving along uh, into the early seventies, uh, all the live stuff. I was yeah. possessed by the live stuff, and of course, I'm I'm moving up to maybe and Peter Frampton. And then you have to have to run into uh, Peter, uh, Peter Frampton, huh? Peter Frampton, or yeah. uh, here Mountain. Yeah, yeah, Mountain was also Mountain nice. Mountain was live. great. Yeah. And and of course, Led Zeppelin was a big, was a big thing. You know what I mean? A amazing, amazing. Uh, yeah, of course. Like, but I was, was so the, young at that time, yeah. so it took a few more years before yeah. you really realized yeah. what it was. You know, yeah, see, yeah. Yeah. it just caught you. Yeah, and then you didn't know why. Yeah, later on you knew why. Yeah, but yeah. Are yep. you, what, what are you, Rudolf? You are a few years older than me, yeah? Yeah, I'm a few yeah. years older. And uh, the next step uh, after the twist and the limbo and whatever Chubby Shaker came yeah. up with and, and the Joey D, there was the situation I remember very much. Uh, I was into a uh, uh, holiday camp from uh, home because I wanted to go where other kids are. That was in, uh, in um, uh, North Sea. Uh, North Sea or East uh, uh, Sea, whatever they call it. And um, there were a few people from Hamburg, older ones, oh. and they're talking about a band called The Beatles. Yeah. And talking about, the one guy was always with his player, record player playing uh, Elvis and all this stuff, and then also in between this kind of thing, Tony Sheridan uh, and, and Beatles. So, and then I heard the first time about the Beatles. And then the Beatles became famous, yeah. of course. That was an, a new kind of uh, thing, which inspired me actually to make music. Because when Elvis was there, uh, I was always a solo artist. Yeah. And yeah. I never wanted to be alone as a, a, a guitar player or as a singer, uh, somehow do something. I always had in my mind, because I was also a soccer player playing in a, in a team. I was always a team player. And when the Beatles came, I said, one moment, that's our four guys. For yeah. me, four friends, four yeah. guys, a band, a gang. Yeah. Yes, that is what I want to do. Because I started already rehearsing and playing guitar, or tried to, uh, because of Elvis. But that was too boring for me, because I was into soccer, yeah. and then in soccer, uh, was happening and I said, why? But Beatles, I s um, immediately start rehearsing and that was for me the time when I moved into this and thinking. And the songs, you yeah, know, so changed course. everything. You yes, know. but um, I tell you one thing, the Rolling Stones became more favorite for me. Well, the me dirty. too, me too. Yeah, dirty, bluesy, yeah. kind of. There was some dirt, kind and, of. And you know, it's funny because L Lemmy, 
was, was such a Beatles freak. Yeah, I know. I was wondering. And, uh, yeah, yes. he, he was way more Beatles than exactly, Stones. Exactly, yeah. And, and the thing is, he told me the first time, long time ago, before I even knew that, he said, you know, everybody thought the Stones were the dirty bastards and, and Beatles were the nice cut boys. Yeah. It was complete opposite, yeah, of course. Yeah, I know, course. I know, yeah. But, yeah. but the musically, I was more into Stones, yes. But... For me, one more than the Stones was for me to play the things. Oh. And when we were covering, uh, we were, of course, in the beginning, a covering band, a cover the Beatles, Stones. I was singing, the drummer was singing, we were sharing. He was more the top 40 guy at singing stuff. I was more the guy, Pretty Things, Yardbirds kind of thing. Ah, Yardbirds. And the Pretty Things, LSD, oh, when this song yeah. came out, that was for Don't Bring Me Down and stuff. I was singing this stuff and for me, that was Dick Taylor actually was the guy who was uh, starting the Rolling Stones with Alexis Corner, yeah. uh, Mick Jagger, uh, Keys, uh, I think. Charlie. And, and what? Charlie. Yeah, Charlie yeah. and uh, Dick Taylor. And Dick Taylor then stopped uh, doing this and made his own band called The Pretty Things. Mm -hmm. So that's it's cool, unbelievable. But what, what then later in the 70s, like I'm moving into 70s, uh, what was your favorite in in the early seventies? Was uh, there any band for you like uh, like it was for me with the purple? No, it was just, just I was the like Hen I was the uh, Led Zeppelin guy. Zeppelin guy, oh, yeah. man. Yeah, the yeah, first course. the first album. It mm -hmm. was a knockout. Yeah, I was, was in a star club uh, watching. I want to see the Spooky Tours, and there was a song came out, Communication Breakdown. Yeah. I said one of my friends. I said, hey. Uh, go to the DJ and ask him what it is. I come down and say, let's have it So yeah. in. Oh. So from this moment, it was a must. And this the album was done in seven days, yeah, including yeah. mixing. Incredible. I was first more so much into Deep Purple. Yeah. And then later, I got back to Led yeah. Zeppelin. I mean, you John Bonham. I, mean? oh, I yeah, saw yeah, yeah. John Bonham playing um, um, uh, Paul McCartney when the wife was still there, mm -hmm. this band was playing for charity for something in uh, next to India. On, uh, then they did a session on who came on stage, uh, John Paul Jones, John Bonham, John yeah. Bonham, and also uh, the singer. Yeah. It was unbelievable. The swing, the, the, it was amazing. Yeah, he, he was the super one of unique. the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Through, uh, 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 Ever, yeah. you know what I mean? But I thought Ian Pace... But well, a little bit Jesse. What? A little bit Jesse. Yeah. yeah, in the beginning. But I, I Exactly. But I, I liked uh, Ian as an extension, a little bit like John Bond, because Ian was very jazzy too. Yeah, that's what I mean. And, Jesse and is a yeah. good word for it. Jesse, yeah, yeah. jazz, blues, hard rock, everything yeah, 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 in yeah, one yeah, yeah. big part. Yeah, including the, the keyboard Yeah, player. exactly. Yeah, the, he John was, Lord. Yeah, yeah, very good. Incredible. I mean, the beginning of Child, uh, Child and Time. Oh, now nah, the whole uh, the Amazing. Whole, the uh. whole thing. But then I, I went crazy on Thin Lizzy's, uh, uh, Thin Lizzy when they came around. Yeah, with, with, with who? La, what? With, with who in it? There were, there were different formations. Yeah, yeah, but mostly when Jailbreak came around. Yeah. 76. Who, who was on the guitar then? It was uh, Brian Robinson. Yeah. And, uh, and Scott Gorham. Yeah, uh, Scott, yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. Uh, it, and then later, Live in Dangerous, yeah. that, that, that live thing was I just saw them in, the I saw him actually in, in Stockholm when we recorded an album there, I think in 83. Mm -hmm. I, I was running into them. We were party with uh, with John Sykes then. John Sykes, eighty three. Yeah, yeah, see yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes. With, uh, uh, what's that called? Um, uh, I was gonna say Ride the Lightning, but it's called. Uh, what was that album called? Thunder and Lightning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I saw every deep. I mean, everything. Lissy show from seventy six up till they yeah, finished, yeah. but. That was a great album for me. Yeah, yeah. And Brian Downey still today is one of my favorite drummers. Ah. Very jazzy, very yeah. dynamic, very uh, mixing blues, jazz mm -hmm. and hard rock yeah, yeah. to me. Uh, and your album. Oh, it's of course Night at the Opera, yeah. Queen, because it's a yeah, masterpiece. Yeah, the masterpiece or of course the second album from uh, Led Zeppelin. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was Whole Lot of Love on it yeah, and stuff. Yeah. Uh, 
and yeah, that took him and, to and, another and, level. And also the one where Kashmir is on it. Mm -hmm. uh, which, which album was that? Fistle uh, 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 Graffiti. Ah. This it's for me yeah. also, and uh, I want two albums. Great, that was fantastic. Uh, of course, also uh, the Eagles with uh, Hotel California. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's so many. Yeah, there's that's so that's many. the reason why I'm so coming it also in, to, impossible to talk about it. Impossible. You can sit one month and talk exactly. about every single record, but but Tokyo Tapes was a big changer for me too. Yeah, see, Bec yeah. Because I told you live albums. To me, they spoke a different language of than course. the studio records. I know there was a life I in was, it. Yeah, I was so. And then later on, uh, in in the when we came into the eighties and and moved on, all this cheating started. You know, you yeah. had a band record a live album in the studio, <laughs> putting on Pink Floyd's live audience. You know, it's like sixty thousand people, yeah, yeah. and they're in the, you know so. But but the real stuff. Yeah, I know there was some. Uh, a lot of uh, adjustments uh, in the 70s too, but but it was live and, and uh, that was a great album for me. And Rainbow, when Rainbow came about with Rainbow Live was yeah. also with Ronnie singing, you know. Yeah. Same thing there, Cozy Powell on drums. Cozy and, Powell, yes. And Tony Carey and Jimmy yeah, Bain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah, yeah. Good band. There were a lot of good stuff, and, but you know, in, in, uh, in these days, you, especially with the albums, that was still in my heart. I was listening to these albums, analog. Mm, yes. For Definitely. days and days and days, hundred times. Still today, it sounds better. CD, you're putting CD in. Uh, I remember when we played on the 82 uh, tour in America. There was uh, um, our record company, they want to uh, present us this uh, CD players, you know, yeah. and we were very happy. I bought already material, which was uh, on analog. I know I had on analog at home and also then in CD. Yeah. So I went home, uh, p um, I had very good speakers, the manga kind of uh, uh, things, very good ones. And I put the, uh, put and plugged the, uh, the turntable and put the CD in. Nice. I was listening and I said, <laughs> Something's wrong. Something <laughs> wrong. I put the cable wrong in it, yeah. something like this. I put the uh, table, turntable on again. Boom. Yeah. I called the record company and said, hey, my, my CD player is broken. You yeah. have to send me a new one. I sent me a new one, same thing. Yeah. Until I found out that they were cutting uh, many things out and yeah, so. All, all the edges. Exact, all the edges. The, exactly. Down and up. The one which the under consciousness uh, can hear. Yeah. So that's what it is. So in this case, I didn't uh, listen to, mu uh, to to CDs so much anymore, more radio in the car and stuff like this, which was, uh, yeah, you could combinate. The only good thing, though, Rudolf, if you remember, was when you could buy the, the disc man and you could have your CD, some CDs with you when you traveled. Yeah, okay. That was convenient. Yeah, okay. But that but was it. Yeah, but yeah, you couldn't take the turntable, but no, I'm yeah. totally only for vinyl. Of course, know. yeah, but but when we talk about intense yeah, yeah, listening. Yeah. Intense Quality listening, of sound. Yeah, yeah. Intense, yeah, yeah. intense listening was no question about this. Unbelievable. So in this case, uh, there are a few kind of albums which will be the the one the one number ones uh, forever, but it's very hard to say out of the... Yeah, I know. But, but it, it's pretty sad to see when they took, let's say, if you go back to our favorite stuff, yeah. and then you see a reissued, remastered, mm -hmm. and you go, why? Why? Yeah, because they want to have a, have, to have, have a possibility to uh, have, a, have, a, have a, a nice headline. Yeah, and, and sell it okay, again. Okay, the I technology guess. Guess goes further. The old albums that may, may be broken or they not sound any go, uh, any more good, and that's why to lift up the quality and make it sound uh, for today better, for mm -hmm. today better. Yeah, and today's systems and stuff. Yeah, but exactly because the speakers getting better, everything. Well, well uh, the technology building up something which is. But the, but the thing is, once you put the vinyl on, your favorite old record in some okay speakers that is the charm right there but i tell you what that thing, is you know so much warmth yeah you know? exactly oh you know what i found out because i made a test with the best stuff uh, turntable and cd player 
with a, a, a very uh, Burmeister uh, from Germany. Mm -hmm. um, but I found out the analog is for the heart and digital is for here, for, for the stomach. For your gut. For the stomach, for the for the, the push, yeah, for the, the push, the because low, yeah, you yeah. never get out of analog so much uh, punch, in punch it, yeah. like with digital. Yeah, yeah, no, that's true. Yeah, because so they bring out certain yeah, exactly the, the low yeah, frequencies yeah, yes, in a different exactly. way, and when they master it. And shit. So, but I tell you one thing. Actually, I, from my point of view, um, the essence out of the sixties, seventies were the eighties. The eighties was the crown of the, this kind of music, yeah, yeah. building up Matt Lang, yeah, yeah, doing yeah. the yeah, yeah. production like crazy, you know, you had... 84, Def Leppard, yes, uh, exactly, Pyromania. Exactly. You yeah. know, the most biggest drum sound you can imagine. Yeah, you know, Van Halen. Van Halen, yeah, yeah. There was also the first album yeah, and, yeah. The, and, and the second and third, very good stuff. That was like really... Uh, Keith Olsen did some great records too. The exactly, yeah. the, the, he did actually... He did some of didn't he do? Uh, he did Joe Walsh. He did, yeah, yeah. and he did also uh, Scorpions' uh, Crazy Words. Yeah. yeah. Which one would you say for you, on the later records that you heard, is one album that you go, shit? Let's say last five years that you go, holy mother of all, which one will be your f that not changed? Kings of Lane. Which one? Kings of Lane. Kings of Lane. Right. Uh, or the uh, 21 pilots. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the problem is, I, I don't... I can't even think. That's a hard because, question. Yeah, because, you know, yeah, you, you, know, you give the question and, and even don't do a whole I don't even know them. the answer. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, because but the so names, yeah. you're losing the names yeah. out of the way. They're, they're, they're coming. You, you say, oh, not bad, not bad. And then you expecting that they're coming with something else and then yeah. never coming. And they quit. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> they do one album, then you hear that the singer's gone solo or the guitar player and they split yeah. up after so one fucking summer. You know, you know, but the know. point is that in the end, it's really something, I mean, here, the, the guys from Green Days, yeah. I liked li late, uh, the stuff that they did. I saw the show in Göteborg about one year ago. Yeah. I saw Green Day where they came around. I saw them in California, and I was disappointed. Yeah, because they were so fucked up. What I heard, I, yeah, I yeah, they know. were. Yeah, they, uh, they were all over the place. Yeah. Then I saw them in Göteborg, and I have to say, I give them twelve out of ten. See, it was a fantastic yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, they have good stuff, and and, and, and they uh, were such a great front person. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and because and he went to rehab, because yeah, I want yeah. to invite him to they MTV Unplugged, together. and he wants to do it, but then I heard that he went straight really to good. rehab. Yeah. They delivered big yeah, time. Yeah, but we played in Scandinavia. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Max and Marcus, my sons, they, they both like Green Day and went to see them. And another band that I really, really think is one of the better ones, it's not new, but it's in the yeah. newer, is uh, Foo Fighters. A Foo Fighters, of course. Fantastic. Yeah, because I saw they him when he so was there. Yeah. When he was there in uh, in uh, the Grunge Band. What was it? Yeah, name? yeah, uh, Nirvana. Uh, Nirvana, yeah. yes. Yeah, I saw them too. And I saw them when when MTV uh, there was MTV uh, uh, in uh, the MTV uh, mm -hmm. uh, MTV uh, Awards. When the bass player throw the bass up in the air, then somehow the light changed, and then uh, you couldn't see. <laughs> knocked him, yeah. yeah, knocked him with half hours. But we, we toured a lot with Motorhead with with uh, with the Foo Fighters. Yes, we did a lot together. Ah. And Dave loved you know yeah, Motorhead and Lemmy especially. And, uh, so we had a great relationship. But every time I was on stage watching Dave, and and uh, the band, it, it was just wow. Yeah. Because they get, I mean, four and a half hour show. Four and, and a half? Yeah, they just, and they could play another four and a half. They, they rehearse in the yeah. dressing room, yeah. the whole show, just for fun, playing, and then they go on stage. They re he, they really have it yeah, in their yeah, heart. Yeah, you yeah. Know. They're a big band now. That's, that's a, a great live band. Yeah. And again, I keep talking live because I've seen so, I, I heard so many bands on the record, then I see them 
live yeah. and they disappoint the shit yeah, out of, of course, me. Yeah, that's so right. I, I love the live shit. Yeah, because you know why? It's because real because they're becoming more sound designers yeah. because of Pro Tools. They play, my, play this riff here, here on this part, here, here, here. And then Paul, uh, can you play the bass yeah, here, here, yeah. here? So, and they're not used to it like we did, playing for t uh, 15, 18 hours, a yeah. uh, uh, few songs in a, a rehearsal studio. And I gotta mention one more band that big change for me, and that's Rush. Rush, yeah, of course. Their live albums, Exit yeah, Stage yeah. Left, All the World at yeah, Stage. It's, it's, uh, the drama and, is and also very good. Yeah, Neil Peart. Yeah, yeah. Overall, these three guys, the guys yes. created the only thing which disappointed me a little bit was always the high voice, Mickey Mouse, from the <laughs> yeah. bass player. You know, yeah, that was, yeah, that was Either you loved him or you yeah, hated him. Some, on some songs, it was very good. But if you hear a whole album yeah. through this voice, then you go and say, ah. But as a musician, as a, uh, then, then I just go, wow. Yeah. Because Rush could make it... Um, they didn't overdo this stuff. They, they, it's so tasteful. Every every time with with the old stuff with King Diamond that we did, I thought we had a little bit of that as well. We we could stay on a heavy riff, and then we make it very complicated, and then we stayed on a heavy riff. Yeah. And Rush, then there's a million bands after Rush, that don't get it. They they, they it's all complicated. It sounds like you pouring out a sack of potatoes <laughs> in the fucking wood stairs. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, it's yeah. too much. Yeah. Too pink. Rush had that. Taste. The taste, exactly. Mm -hmm. you find, to find the right balance between exactly. everything. Exactly, between yeah. technique yeah. And, and pure heart straight and rock. Yes. Yeah. Right. I don't have any kind of favorite album. I have three, maybe. Which is always hard to, to really say. Pick out, yeah. It's Laugh Drive, it's Blackout, that is a monster. and it's Love It First Thing. That's my favorite. And then in the later days, of course, Crazy World, no question about that. But this, this three albums, why this three albums? Because we were, with everything, like, you must, uh, like a surfing person, it's like a surfing person, getting the highest wave of the year, and you on top of it. Mm. That was for us the 80s. Yeah. Worldwide Life was the... Um, uh, when you talk about live, right. Worldwide Live was the second uh, most sold uh, live album after Ever, yeah. Peter Frampton. Yeah, yeah. Now we are three, third, uh, and third, and it's second, 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 second. Now we are third because the Eagles made a live album and kicked us from number two oh. to number three. So you're bronze medalist now then? What? You're collecting the bronze medal. Exactly, now, yeah. yeah, yeah. But we had one already, the, we had the silver one already but hanging here. But silver, second was the first loser, you know, so maybe oh, bronze okay. is <laughs> <laughs> So in this case, I can't say because we made, no, we were on top of the wave and these three albums helped us to go there. And of course, Crazy World is a good album made by yeah, Keith yeah, Olsen, yeah. as you uh, uh, mentioned. He also produced, I think, Final Countdown. Can it yeah, possible? Yeah, he did. Um, so, and uh, later on, of course, then we had the 90s. Uh, Crazy World brought us to the, um, to the 90s, actually. Came back, uh, had some albums where we did some experimentations but came back with the album uh, Unbreakable. Unbreakable. So, and from there, we went then straight into Humanity Number no. 1, and then into uh, uh, Sting in the Tail, and then back again, because the circle, yeah. where, you, where the st style is coming back, classic rock came back, and that was a good thing. And what so was your, your no, favorite? No, to, to me is, each record that I done, we did thir I did 13 studio records yeah. with Motorhead, and then the Dokken album, King Diamond record, we did, I did four of those. Each album represent a certain time, of course, and I, th there's, there's been some albums, and I won't say which ones, where the album might be one of the better ones, but I remember the time was not so good. It was not connected. Exactly. exactly. Yes. The, it, it was... And they go, oh, this is the best album ever. Yes, you might be right. So far, this is one of the better ones. But I remember how much maybe we were fighting in a studio or the touring was not so much fun. It represents a little period 
of my career, yeah. which was just okay. And then we had the best time in the world, and we might have done an album that is uh, a little too fast. So, but among, if I say, my own stuff, I also have a few. I mean, of course, the magic was there when we did Abigail with King Diamond. Abigail and them, I'm, I'm sure, they are classic cult. Mm -hmm. We, we formed a complete new generation of musicians with those two albums, 80, 87, 86, 87, 88. But with Motorhead, I really, really like the last five or six we did with Cameron Webb, yeah. Inferno, up till the last one, because we changed the sound a little bit and became very good, from good to very good somehow. Yeah. And Bastards was a great album, the first real one I did. I think with this formation you guys had was all more very stable, no? Yeah, it was compared to the <laughs> <laughs> earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, but <laughs> it's it's so hard to talk about your own album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Yes, for me it's the time and how how happy or how easy exactly. things yeah, are, yeah. and how the album comes out. Yeah, sometimes they click. And, and sometimes then, then they don't. Exactly. So it's, it's, it's very hard. And I'm proud of all the live stuff i done yeah. because we did it real life. Yeah. We did one in, at the docks in Hamburg. Uh, I don't remember. A Motorhead one called, uh, yeah, I don't remember what the album's called now, but <laughs> on the album we wrote not one single overdub. Yeah, I see. All the fuck ups were yeah, still yeah, there. Yeah. A bum chord. A, a stick flying away, you know, you could hear everything. Yeah. A little tone, let me, uh, took wrong. We left it all. Yeah, it's yeah. rock and roll. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah, it it's was, real. It was, the atmosphere was so good that would you change a little bit, you would destroy, destroy the yeah. atmosphere. I know, that's, away the very, that's the, the real perfect, mess. that's the perfect yeah. uh, decision to do. Better be unperfect, because what yeah. is the headline called? Perfect is boring. Yeah, perfect See? is super and, boring. And if you are strong enough, that's uh, what I uh, like very much on the Metallica thing, when I remember when they had this um, f uh, f uh, fuso uh, or psycho uh, guy there, the doctor, uh, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, when they filmed themselves by yeah, yeah, fighting yeah. And, and getting all the dirt out of this, uh, this whole band, mm. uh, that they were strong enough to show what is happening behind the curtains of yeah. a rock band. Because so that's that is what the people also want to see. There's not everyday sunshine. No. There is sometimes a difficult time and you have to go through it. And when you make it and you go through it, you're even stronger after yeah, that. Yeah. And and you show the realness and, and which means that you love each other, but it's a family. You are gonna argue. Yes, it, exactly. Especially if you are, have a band with five members or three members you have three strong wheels or five strong wheels. Sparks will fly. Yeah. And it's very normal. Yeah. So it's trying not to be scared of of normal. Some people think it's terrible because you argue, but it's not. It's very normal. Yeah, yeah. I argue with my family. Yeah, because it's emotional. Musicians are more emotional because yes, they have to course. be, because if you're not emotional, you can't catch the vibes which you have the to artists. have to uh, uh, let's tra travel. Otherwise, you'd be very boring on stage. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're nice, but <laughs> that's all. Oh.